Tiger, congratulations on Thor Ragnarok. This was such a funny movie, such an infectious sense of joy and fun about it. So congratulations on it, first of all. Thank you, Deirdre. This is your first foray into big blockbuster superhero territory. I have to ask you, first of all, were you a fan of superhero movies even before being approached about it? I was a huge fan of superhero movies, and it yeah. all started with Flash Gordon. Oh, yeah. Um, in 1980. Mm -hmm. And... I loved that film. I always said when we were making this film that if uh, Freddie Mercury were alive mm -hmm. today, I would have asked Queen to do the soundtrack for this film. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the poster, I mean, it's just, it's, it looks like the cover of a Queen album, really. It does, it? yeah. It's, it's really got design. everything. It's ridiculous. And were there any kind of super movies you were inspired by as well as, say, like kind of the older stuff? Um, uh, you know, not to, to sort of be a kind of arty uh, name dropper, but mm -hmm. um, Holy Mountain by uh, Jodorowsky oh, was a okay. bit of an influence for us. Oh, that's an interesting we were looking at one. design and things like yeah. that, and I'm sure everyone says that. But um, yeah, I just sort of, we were trying to kind of, because like, I think Guardians was really like holding on to the 80s mm -hmm. vibe um, in, in their approach. And we, we had a little bit of an 80s thing going on, obviously mm -hmm. with the font and stuff, but, or, but we tried to run a bit more into the 70s and like mm -hmm. just how kind of, uh, I really think in the 70s when they came up with ideas for movies, they really did just, it was like a speed round, they just said, and go, Lady with Antlers, it's Incredible Hulk, <laughs> Giant Wolf, Zombie Army, Dreadlock Guy in the Woods, Space Viking, you know, so that, and that's how we kind of approach it really, it's like, there, was, there were no bad ideas. Mm -hmm. Any idea, I think, that was suggested, we mm -hmm. said, yes, we'll put it in the movie. Brilliant. And speaking of the ideas, one thing I wanted to ask you was um, about the dialogue and the improvisation involved in it, because that was, for me, one of the keys of this movie was the dialogue. We have a word here in Ireland, banter. There was a lot of banter. There's a lot of banter. Back and We've forth got the between same the word. characters. Don't yes. you guys try and claim the word banter. <laughs> We've got it down in New Zealand, too. Uh, you'll find the word banter is... Um, is bandied around. That's uh, good. A I'm lot, glad we had that in world. common. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, this my, yeah. my some of my favourite things of, in this film are the, the, the displays of banter, mm -hmm. especially between Thor and Banner, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Banner banter. Yes, and the brother banter also. And the brother banter, mm -hmm. yeah. It's very like, and so basically the approach was we use the script and it's mm -hmm. more of a kind of suggestion of what we would like to do. Mm -hmm. If there's any like pieces of vital information that we need to convey to the audience, make sure we hit those. But then you can kind of dance mm -hmm. around that information as much mm -hmm. as you want. And that's where you get the, the just those scenes where you can tell that um, that Chris and Mark are really mm -hmm. listening to each other yeah. and waiting and they don't know what the other one's going to say. Yeah. And I think audiences appreciate that because it feels like there's yeah. a bit more life on the screen. I read that you said that somewhere as, as something as much as 80% of it was improvised. Would you say it was that high, yeah, in the dialogue? Well, I improvised that number, so yeah. it could have been, could be anything. Could be, could be 20%. I haven't done that. I, mm -hmm. We've got a team uh, researching that, and okay. uh, the results have not come back yet. Yeah. So um, I can't tell entirely mm. accurately if it's 80% or 20% or 50%. Yeah. I would mm -hmm. say, my guess... Yeah. Realistically, it's 68%. Fine, fine. <laughs> um, I love as well that you have such a great like mix of actors in there. You have the likes of Chris Hemsworth, Tom Diversity. Hiddleston, Kate Blanchett, Jeff Goldblum, and that's that's just naming a few of them. Were there any of them that like kind of surprised you, particularly during the improvisation process, that maybe brought something new you didn't expect? Well, I'd say Chris was the biggest surprise. I mean, mm -hmm. I already knew he was really funny. Mm -hmm. you know, I'd seen Ghostbusters and. Just before we started shooting, I knew he was, you know, that, he'd, they had, that no one had really exploited that part of him mm -hmm. um, in other movies. But then when it came down to, you know, in the middle of the shoot, he was bringing the most incredible ideas yeah. and he was just a very smart guy who's funny and he, um, yeah, he just like constantly is trying, constantly is trying to make the scene better. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so the, the get help joke with the, you know, where he throws Loki into the guys, that's his yeah. idea. He came up with that. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's a bunch of, yeah, it's, He's, yeah. he, he was a, a revelation. Yeah, I'm laughing, sorry, just remembering them. <laughs> um, I love your own character in it, Korg, and it reminded me of the fact that you also directed your own character in What We Do in the Shadows, Viago. Um, are you ever kind of tempted, particularly because this is comedy, to kind of give yourself the best lines? And how do you manage that balance of acting in your mo own movies as well as directing them? Um, well, as a, as a storyteller, mm -hmm. um, you know, for me it's all about... Uh, you know, I just service the story first, and you know, 
the fact that I get all the best lines um, in the movie is just a coincidence. Um, I can't help that. I, it's not my fault. Yeah. Also, all the best roles were taken, so I had to yeah. play that role in the end. <laughs> didn't I? Um, I'm really used to working with myself mm -hmm. as an actor, and I'm really used to like, that. That to me is really fun mm -hmm. because well, part of the reason I became a filmmaker was because um, as an actor, the, all the roles that were offered were really boring, mm -hmm. and um, there's just nothing really cool. And once I started directing, I thought, oh, I'll, play, I'll, write, I'll write this role for myself, something that I've never been a vampire before. Um, so, yeah, so I'll keep doing that yeah. because, you know, I've, 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 I've got a lot of power yes. now as a director. <laughs> but, um, yeah, all of the Korg's lines were, were ad-libbed. Um, and that was just, and a lot of that was Chris as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. we just decided to just run these scenes really long mm -hmm. and just have these big, long conversations because yeah. I thought, oh, it'd be nice to see a rock guy yeah. and Thor having a weird conversation. <laughs> Another actor who I absolutely love in this, Rachel House, because yeah. I thought she was brilliant in Hunt for the Wilder People. What do you love so much about working with her? She's just so um, versatile. Mm -hmm. I've, you know, if, if you look at all the, the roles that she's done in, in my films, just, she's got a different look in every one. Mm -hmm. and she's believable and you want to watch her she's funny she's um she's a great great actor she's in moana she plays the grandmother in moana she um she's all over the place and yeah i'll put her in as much as i can i'll put her in everything i do this is one we always like to ask um just for fun can you name for us three of your favorite movies ever just ones that have say inspired you over the years um alice doesn't live here anymore i love that movie um Martin Scorsese, uh, mm -hmm. Alan Burstyn, wonderful film that I love about a uh, solo mum mm -hmm. struggling to find love and to you know, give her son the best life she can. Mm -hmm. um, Badlands, one of my all-time favourites, Terence mm -hmm. Malick. Two kids, uh, murderers uh, on the run with, uh, across America. Um, and you know what? The next one I'm going to go with is Jaws. Jaws, that's a classic. Because I think Jaws is one of the greats. One of the greats. I have to check out Badlands, actually. Badlands so, is... Yes. If you watch Badlands and then watch my other films, you'll see I've stolen... I've basically based all of my films on Badlands. Brilliant. So then my very last question for you, Taika, is having worked now, having kind of come up from kind of indie, kind of kookier productions, and now you've done kind of a big blockbuster, what kind of projects would you like to work on next or what do you see in your future? Uh, something that's just sort of uh, very... I'd like to do a big departure from mm -hmm. this kind of thing. I'd like to come back. Yeah. Um, I just feel like I want to do something that, make, that kind of uh, challenge, challenges me. This one here, the, part of the reason I did this film was because I thought it would be a big challenge. Mm -hmm. and I'd never done something like that and I thought I'd, I'd learn a lot doing it. Um, and I did and it was great. And now I kind of feel like I'll do something else. Or maybe, or maybe I'll go back to doing, a, maybe we'll do a silent film. A black and white that film or something. Really or, wow. uh, a romantic comedy. Nah, I won't do that. <laughs> I don't know. But something different. Yeah. Brilliant. That's great. Thanks so much. Thank the you. world is your oyster. <laughs>